my name is dr michael okreke i uh, welcome you to my uh, youtube channel on getting started with modeling series and this video is dedicated to nano composite modeling within abacus and you would have seen other videos that i've made on, on this same topic where i showed you how to build up these nano composite structures the geometric setup and then how you can analyze the results so there was a previous method so this is the second method this method will not require you to use any other extra software except the software and the tools that are available in abacus so these are the things that we're going to go through i'm going to quickly run through them and explain to you how you can actually generate stress strain graph from a micro mechanical analysis involving nano composites within abacus so let's quickly switch over to my desktop so here we are within Abacus, um, the Abacus environment. And if you're not here, the, the nano composite we're dealing with has circular inclusion stating uh, circles and you know, particles within the structure. And I've already shown you a previous video how you can build this 2D composite. And within it, it's got metrics and fibers, not fibers, I mean uh, particulates. So the particulates are made up of um, silicon carbides and then the matrix is made from aluminum alloy. So this is how it was generated previously. So what we're going to do with this now is to set it up so that it can actually run. And while we're running it, we'll also create a framework to make it possible for us to analyze this, this using um, the tools within Abacus. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the materials so what do we have in the material module so here i choose to use this generic name where the inclusions the particles can be called fiber you can decide to change it to whatever you like so maybe for the sake of this work so i'm going to rename that and call it the silicon carbides being the the inclusions and then the metrics if i rename that i'm going to call it aluminium 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 okay alloy so that's what we're going to call those two the silicon carbide maybe if we change go ahead to make it more explicit particle okay so what do we have on that section so let's look at the names on the section so we can rename that and I'm going to call it the particulate section okay and if I rename it properly particulate section so take away the sign at the end and then the metrics I rename that and call it aluminium section again if you are doing this from scratch you would probably you know, if you follow the other video, you would have shown you how to do it. So, um, so if I double click on the aluminium section, I need to select aluminium alloy as my material, and then the particulate section, I need to also select the particulate silicon particulate as my as as my particle. So this these are all done. So we then go into the RV to the composite, which is the full model, and look at section assignment here. So if we double click on section assignment, okay, so make a section assignment. So what it will say is select the region. So if you look at here, select the region to be assigned a section. So the first region we're going to select is, so we just click in the center here, which is the, the matrix, okay, done. And it says this region has to be made from aluminum section, okay, every other thing is default. So while still in that scene without checking anything, so I'm going to draw a box around every content and press down control and click again inside the metrics section. So that will deselect the metrics, leaving only behind the particulates. So I click done and then I'll go back here and look at what we have on the particulates, particulate section, done. So that sets up the model for us to now assign check to check with the property so if i go to the top here and switch the default 
from property default to material at least it will show me that i've got metric switch and i've got fiber um, particles within the structure so everything is fine then we need to mesh it so we're going to the mesh module double click on the mesh module so currently showing that it's empty that means there's no mesh in this model so we see it so it's giving me 0.45 that's okay okay now the other thing is what kind of meshing algorithm do i want to use so if you click on that it says select the regions to be assigned mesh control either individually or collectively i want it collectively done so you select that click done and then it comes up with this the current non-default colors are used in the viewpoint would you like to change this to mesh default not really so i'm going to select triangle because it was same quad dominated element shape will not be good it will not work very well with selecting this with meshing so i'm going to select triangles and allow the technique to be free um and then that's that so the mesh control has been set then i need to just go back and mesh the model so when you click on that at the base here it gives you okay i want to mesh the model so now i've got my model meshed um so everything is done for that state the particles are done the sets are done so the other thing that i would like us to do while we are still within that set is to create some sets okay so the first set i'm going to create here is the set called the re um the model okay front face set okay so a set in, in a set of points at the front if I click OK, so select the points I hover until this, until the point. So let's just I hover it right here. So that line is selected. I press down Control. The next line, okay, no Shift. Sorry, press down Shift. So no, so we just do that again. So Control that. The next one and the next one so while pressing down shift so you select all the members of that line which will be the surface upon which we are going to explain uh, instruct our load so under tools so we go back to the assembly module so under tools i need to create a reference point reference point so this is a point somewhere in the model where we can apply load and extract properties to so at the base here, it said, said put a point uh, as a reference. So this structure is starting from zero here. So it's 10 by 10. So somewhere around here is 10. So if I use a point that is, let's say, 15 away in the X direction and five in the Y direction. So let's say my X direction is 15, Y direction is five and zero. So let's see. Select okay select a point as a reference or enter it's xy so it's just xy coordinate right let's say 2d system not a 3d okay so if we look so you could see if i zoom everything so you could see where my reference point is so this is an important point of that of that structure because this reference point is a point in space where we are going to um so this so if i go to assembly i think i've just created another reference point so so i'm going to delete the number two reference point because it's not necessary all right so that's fine so now what we are going to do is to create a set for this reference point a set for this reference point so let's see if we can do that so still within this module so double click okay so we get this window so i'm going to call it the reference point nodal set okay buffer point set okay and it has to be a node point rather than a geometric point continue all right, so it doesn't show on that window, so we need to come off. So I'm gonna cancel that and do it in the assembly module. So the assembly module that shows it, okay. 
So we're within this assembly module, which is here. So we want to create a set. Okay, so I'm going to call it reference point set. And now we can select it within the assembly module. Okay, so it is selected, then click done. So now what do we have? If we go into the assembly module sets, set section, so we've got the reference point set for the composite, the front set, and other set that defines other regions. So you can see this is a metric set, and this is a fiber set, the front face set, and the reference point set. So those are all specified correctly for us. Now the next thing is we need to create a step, analysis step, so loading step. So I would like to call that a loading step and it's a static general loading step. You know, the time period is one, everything is fine, so we can leave that. Okay, now the next thing is we need to create a history output. So this is where we extract our stress strain. So if you double click or right click on history, so I'm going to call it the reference point history output the reference point history output because this is where we're going to extract our values so now if you go to set now reference point is a set so now we're going to apply a linear loading in the x direction so what is really important for us is the reaction forces so if you go to the first section here open so there's a reaction force in the one direction we don't need the reaction force in the other direction so for because we're looking at the universal x-axis loading so the one direction is empty as the x direction and then the other thing we need to also to look out for is the displacement as well in this direction so displacement as well in the one direction so within here it says i'm looking for u1 and rf1 u1 being the displacement in that direction and rf1 being the reaction force the force in that same direction so we are going to extract this information at the reference point that has been defined in the model so the reference point is here but this is kind of where our model is being is loaded so there are a few other things there are things that we need to do with with this particular case and that is to create a kinematic coupling between this and that kinematic coupling between this and that and I need to explain that to you, what we mean by that, um, this kinematic coupling. And we're going to use a feature within Abaco's called star equation to do this, but I need to give you a little bit of the theory behind this. So let's switch to a, a whiteboard so that I can explain this for you. So if we, this is a whiteboard. So what we are trying to do basically is that we've got the structure and somewhere on this structure, we've got the front end that we're interest, interested in. So we've got the nodes on this front end, and I'm calling this set of node my front face, front uh, set. Okay, so we've got that front set. And then somewhere away, further away, we've got a point, which is another point here, which is called the reference point uh, set. So we need to find a kind of a kinematic coupling between all of them okay so there has to be a kinematic coupling between this edge such that if we decide to apply a displacement delta u on that that displacement will cause everything on this face to likewise be displaced so the theme of how this can be done for this to happen so that when you apply a displacement u everything here will experience you so how this happens is called kinematic coupling okay kinematic coupling um, but another way of doing this is to use also a star equation which is a facility in abacus to do this so and the way the star equation works it works on a, a canon canonical equation something called a canonical canonical equation in this canonical equation for this we mean that the displacement for the front set okay in the x direction minus the displacement from the reference point set 
again in the x direction has to be equal to zero so what makes this canonical is the idea that the equation always has to be equal to zero okay so if we consider this a little bit more some parameters become apparent here so one is the coefficient of this so here would be one and here will also be minus one and x here would have a unit of one in abacus a unit of one in abacus so the canonical form equation if you don't know about this please do read it up in abacus so the star equation which exists in abacus works on this principle how many terms are there in this equation there are two so term one and term two okay so we'll write that two equation there now we start with the front set. So the nodal set for the front set is listed here. So we'll give it a, a, a node name, which is a front set. And the next thing is what direction is it acting? What direction is this? What, what's the direction is it acting? So it's acting in the X direction. We're interested in what's happening in the X direction, which is the one direction according to Abacus speak. And then what is the coefficient of this front set plus one? And now the next thing is the back set, which is a reference point set. So again, what is this coefficient? Sorry, what is the direction is acting in one direction and this coefficient is minus one. Okay, minus one. So now this is the canonical equation that we need to specify inside Abacus that defines what we are interested in here. Basically, you want to see that this moves as well as this point is moving using a star equation and you create this one-to-one -one link between a nodal set and a reference point set and that's number one then the next thing we're going to do as well is we're going to as well as doing that we're going to extract force versus displacement delta u data from this RP set okay what, what we have here is that we're going to prescribe the load okay here so these are the few things that we are going to be doing with this uh, if we're going to carry on so let's look into that so if I put back put the tablet down and then go back to the presentation go back to the to Abacus so if we go back to Abacus, okay. So this is what we're going to do now. There is a constraint. So we'll look in the constraint section, double click on constraint. So what do we have here? What kind of constraint am I looking to make? So I'm going to call it the constraint equation. And we're going to use a, a star equation command to do that. So continue. Now, if you look closely, the coefficient that we defined, if I just, the question that we defined is basically coefficient one. The nodal set that we attach that is the front nodal set. So again, if I expand this window, let me just open it up so that you can see um, what each of those terms are. Yeah, so the front face is the one that we want there, okay? Then the next thing is the degree of freedom. Obviously, this is an X direction, and we want it associated with a global reference frame, okay? Which is a global X, Y, Z. That's fine. So then the second coefficient is actually minus, minus 1, and this it must now be linked to the reference point set, which is the RP set. The degree of freedom is 1, and our reference frame has to also be global so a global system of coordinates so this is fine okay so you can see now there is now this link between the reference point here and this front face the reference point there have been kind of connected not directly but using a star equation so the next step we need to do is to fix the back of this model so fixed back again you could use other type of ways but we're going to use a simple um, symmetric analysis to fix the back so I'll 
select that press down shift select that select that so that back face is all selected i believe yes and then click done so i want it to be a cast tray which means i'm fixing it in all direction translation and rotation so now the front face is where i need to apply my load but because i've got already a pre-existing star equation that are you know canonical equations that are connected i'm going to then apply the load on that reference point i'm going to use a displacement loading so displace tensile load okay a displacement tensile load or displaced tensile load loading step i want to make it a displacement based analysis so you continue and then this is where we want to put that done now i want that to be here so this edge is 10 millimeter 10 units long so if i decide to displace it only by two that means i'm putting in a 20 percent strain within the model okay so this gives us now this setup of the model everything is in place with the loading there and it's also kind of there is also a constraint associated with that so if we open and activate the constraint so it shows us the content constraints are there so now let's set up the job so my job will be um so this is circular inclusion 13 tense tensile x simulation one okay so that is done so let's look at the materials aluminum alloy do we have all the materials for aluminum alloy okay so this is a mistake i did not include the properties of aluminum and i just created a shell for them but not the properties so aluminum i know that it's got a young's model of 70 k to power 9 and 0 0.31 typically we want it to also plastically deform okay so that means it's got a young modulus of 100 megapascal e to power 6 and 0 is typically the plastic string we start off with so we do the same for the silicon particle silicon carbide again there's no elastic properties for it so the elastic properties for silicon carbide is um, 140 e to power 9 and 0 0.31 typically there is no yield stress we don't want it to yield so we'll leave out the yield aspect so let's go back and try and submit that so if you submit that and then it's saying okay the job exists that's fine i don't want you to show me this warning just go ahead and run it okay so what are the you know the reports that we get here so we know the job is running and there are some information on global seeds and and all that so any updates so not update yet i mean we can go ahead and monitor so good good thing is that it says analysis input file has been completed successfully so you do want this to happen because it says that all the specifications you've given are correct so we'll look at the monitor to check what's happening with this simulation okay so already the simulation has started and it's gone a few steps so what you're looking for basically is on the total time taking required remember we chose a time of one so it moved already up to one and it's completed so we didn't have to wait um so job completed so we look at the results All right okay so we we have an interesting result here the back end is firmly fixed but the front end is being pulled if we look at the plastic strain of this which gives you a better picture of how the plastic city is building up in the model um, what we will notice right away is that the front end is deforming very quickly and very rapidly most of the fibers in this strongly sort of reinforced region stay in place and there's also a build up of of, of plasticity building up 
almost into a, a share band through this medium where it's identified as a weak zone where there is no fiber or particle reinforcement on the system here okay interestingly where this fiber is located is not allowing any displacement any plasticity to build up there so these are some of the interesting visualizations that you can make by looking at this um if you allow for damage to build up and can actually monitor the fracture pattern as the structure begins to damage through this material at the moment all we're seeing is an accumulation of plastic strain in the model so if we get to the end of this you could see accumulation of plastic strain this particle seems kind of isolated and damage could probably build up around particularly in this region that had a lot of plastic loading in it uh, plastic strain within it so this this these are the, the sort of results you get but clearly what we want to do with this is to kind of extract some stress strain data and check what elastic properties we would be able to get from based on this so now how do we do that so we go back and create xy data so if you click on that button to click xy data so it takes you to this window that says okay what do you want i want to create xy data based on my history output you continue on that so it loads the window where the history output data are okay so this is the history output data and we've already prescribed what we're interested in we're interested in these two the other output data come by default when you're setting up a model abacus like to leave these ones in place i mean you can remove them but it's always a good thing to leave them so what we are really interested in are these two variables so i'm going to press down shift control and select both of them okay so we select both of them now we're going to plot them right away at the base so if you plot it now what you see so i'm dismissing that you see two set of data a reference reaction force data for nodal set rp set so this is a reference point set that we specified and the displacement data so this was kinematically attached to the model and we find these two results connected somehow so displacement and reference so we want to export this i'm going to export this into an, an excel sheet of some kind and then we can then operate on this to get stress strain data so right at the top here under plugins you go to tools and then you go to excel utilities so this is a little app application that is created that comes as a plugin with abacus which allows you to export directly your xy data from abacus to excel so using a current xy plot this is what i'm looking for i mean you could do a temporary one and temporary two which is the same data but i like to use a current xy plot because then it will report everything that is on this window and then click ok so you may select at least an xy data which is which is what i didn't do so you now click ok so now what it's trying to then do is to read through this data so you can see somewhere here it's reading through this data extracting their x their time and y components time and y components and now you see it goes right away in excel and you bring bring that data so what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to insert a space so this is playing with excel okay and i know that this is time because x y and then this of course my force so force f1 usually in unit of newton this is also a time because this will then be time versus displacement so i'm going to delete this time because it's not necessary for my analysis because we're just repeating the time so then this is displacement u1 okay so i've got my displacement data i've got my time data as well so displacement is in unit of whatever the unit of the model maybe millimeters or micrometers but we're not really that concerned so the first thing we're going to create here is a strain so my strain would be e1 okay and then then i've got my stress which will be s1 
because this is the one direction or the x direction that we're working with and i'm, I'm particularly interested in a mega pascal version of this stress so this will be equal to the displacement divided by the edge length of the model the model is a 10 by 10 model so 10 10 microns okay that gives me my nominal strain now this will be also equal to the stress will be the force that we extracted force divided by the area but again in this model all we have is a 2d problem so the edge length is 10 but the depth will assume as one because it's a 2d problem so it's a unit depth it's typical for for this to assume a unit diverge depth and thickness so but what i will also have to multiply it with so whatever result i get okay so if i put that in bracket here and then i'm going to divide that by 1 e to power 6 okay so 1 e to power 6 so that it will not be in mega pascal form so i select both of them and click at that point then it runs through evaluates everything that we have now we have sort of a set of tables with a, a true stress against my nominal stress against a true stress of some kind so what do we now do with this value so let me convert this so control t okay so i want to convert this into a table control t so you say creating a table my headers are already specified in the okay so we've got a table so really what we're looking for here would be this value and that value so i'll select that insert go to this point and then i'll choose this type of table this type of scatter plot okay so this gives us the stress and the strain diagram for this problem the stress and the strain diagram for this problem okay I mean, what are the other interesting things we're going to use the maximum stress or the yield stress will obviously be equal to the maximum of the values of stress that you have here the maximum of the values of stress so that gives us about 408.078 megapascal which is good um i mean you could also talk about the yield strength which will be equal to the maximum of the strain in the model okay so Young's modulus so how do we find Young's modulus okay the Young's modulus is typically the slope in the elastic region the slope in the elastic region okay so we collect that data slope what is my y value so i'll take it about three of them and what is my known x value i'll try those three and then close it okay so we've got some number in megapascal so maybe if we divide that by 1000 so we have a number that is in gigapascal so that gives me gigapascal so this is then a set of ways in which we can extract some properties based on what we have in the table so again we've got set of properties associated with this so we've got a graph from the simulation and we've extracted these properties and you can compare this with method one and you find that it's ex also exactly the same sort of values that we obtained using and the other method uh, met the, the other method so this is the only difference you would notice here is what's happening post yield and this is really a consequence of the boundary condition so if i go back to the simulation the boundary condition is completely fixed at the back which is sort of artificial because it's not really ideal behavior for this system so it's affecting how the evolution of the stress within the material is you know post yield 
And so the posterior behavior associated with this Dirichlet or fixed back boundary condition setup is different from what we had when we did the other case where we were using periodic boundary condition. But that's really what I want to talk about in this video and I hope you found it useful. Um, and what I've really tried to cover here is how you can use Abacus to do an analysis for, like example, in this case, a stress strain associated from a non-composite where you've got silicon carbide particles within an aluminum alloy matrix. Um, how you can extract properties from that and use it for your design purposes. Um, if this is the kind of videos that you like, please do subscribe to the channel and press the notification button so that you can get notified as soon as videos like this are made. If there are things that you like me, videos like you like me to make, or maybe some final elements, issues, modeling issues that you, you're battling with that you like me to make videos around this, I'll be happy to do that. So please, within the, the comment section, do put a feedback for me so that I can also review that and find things that I can also make videos to address some of your concern. Thank you for your interest in this channel and I hope that you have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.